Welcome everyone. Today's lecture is on cholinergic transmission and cholinergic receptor. So in today's lecture, we are going to learn about cholinergic transmission. So what is cholinergic transmission means? It is the process of synaptic transmission which uses acetylcholine as a transmitter. So once acetylcholine is going to get released into the synaptic cliff, it is going to bind to its receptor and those receptors are called as cholinergic receptor. Learning objective. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to discuss steps involved in cholinergic neurotransmission and enumerate different cholinergic receptor, their location, mechanism of signal transduction. Cholinergic nervous system, which is also known as parasympathetic nervous system. And in this nervous system, acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter. Location of acetylcholine. There are four sites where the acetylcholine is going to get released. The first one is somatic nervous system. Here, acetylcholine is going to get released at neuromuscular junction. That is the junction between the neuron and the muscle. Second site is sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglia. Third site is parasympathetic postganglionic nerve. And the fourth site is sympathetic postsynaptic nerve to sweat gland and adrenal medulla. Cholinergic transmission. So cholinergic transmission is the process of synaptic transmission which uses acetylcholine as the transmitter. So in cholinergic transmission, we are going to study the synthesis, storage, release and hydrolysis of acetylcholine in a cholinergic nerve ending with the help of a diagram. So there are six steps involved. The first step is choline transport, which is considered as the rate limiting step by active transport. So in this step, the choline, it is going to take a nerve into the nerve ending by means of choline transferase. Or you can say that choline is going to get transported into the cytoplasm of cholinergic nerve ending by means of sodium dependent choline transferase. So once the choline enters into the cytoplasm of cholinergic nerve ending, it is going to get acetylated by means of acetyl coenzyme A to form acetylcholine. And this is going to take place in the presence of choline acetyl transferase. So this is the second step where the acetylcholine synthesis is taking place. Next is that acetylcholine is going to get transported into the presynaptic vesicle. And this transport mechanism is by active transport mechanism. Here, visamicol is a drug which is going to inhibit this transport mechanism. So this is how the acetylcholine is going to get transported and get stored into the synaptic vesicle. So this is the third step. Now fourth step is that how the acetylcholine is going to get released into the synaptic cleft is that when a nerve impulse or action potential arrives at the nerve terminal, it will result in depolarization which causes the calcium channel located at the nerve ending to get open and that is going to cause this influx of calcium ion. So calcium ions will bring this synaptic vesicle to get fused with the presynaptic nerve ending. So once the synaptic vesicle is going to get fused with the presynaptic nerve ending, the acetylcholine is going to get released by means of exocytosis. So once the acetylcholine is going to get released, it is going to bind to the receptors which is located on the post synaptic neuron. And what are the receptors of acetylcholine is muscarinic receptor and nicotinic receptor. And these receptors are called as cholinergic receptor. Next is that hydrolysis of release acetylcholine. So this acetylcholine, it is action should get terminated. So how acetylcholine action is going to get terminated means by means of acetyl cholinesterase enzyme. So this is the enzyme which is involved in the breakdown or metabolism of acetylcholine to choline and acetate. And there are drugs which is going to inhibit this enzyme. Those are called as anticholinesterase enzyme. So these are the drugs which is going to inhibit acetylcholinesterase enzyme and thus they are going to increase the level of acetylcholine. There are two types of acetylcholinesterase enzyme. Two cholinesterase enzyme which is located in the synapses and neuromuscular junction and also on red blood cells and pseudocholinesterase which is also called as butylyl cholinesterase. This is mainly found in plasma. There are few toxins which is going to affect the cholinergic transmission. The first is 
botulinum toxin. So it is going to inhibit the release of acetylcholine. Next is hemicolium. It is going to inhibit the acetylcholine biosynthesis mainly by inhibiting the choline uptake step. And last is the toxin, which is found in the black widow spider venom. It is going to prevent the storage of acetylcholine, mainly by causing the massive release. And that is going to result in the depletion of stored vesicles of acetylcholine. Thus, it is going to empty the stored acetylcholine. So this completes regarding the cholinergic transmission. Six steps. First is choline transport. Second is acetylcholine synthesis. Third one is acetylcholine packaging, that is a storage. Fourth one is acetylcholine release. Fifth is acetylcholine binding to the receptor. And the sixth is hydrolysis of release acetylcholine. Next is cholinergic receptors, which is also called as cholinoreceptors. So they are two receptors. Muscarinic receptor, the subtype are M1 to M5. And nicotinic receptor, the subtype are NM and NN. So first we will discuss about muscarinic receptors. So this receptor belongs to G protein couple receptor family. And this receptor is stimulated by muscarine. That means they are going to get activated by muscarine and blocked by atropine. So atropine is the drug which is going to block the muscarinic receptor. Location of muscarinic receptors is that they are basically located on central nervous system, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle and gland. So let's study the subtype of muscarinic receptor in a comparison way. So among M1, M2, M3, M4, and M5, the M1 till M3 are very, very important. So we will study the M1, M2, M3 in a comparison way. So let's see the location and functions of M1, M2, and M3. M1 is also called as neuronal because it is basically located in the CNS. Uh, first location is autonomic ganglia, where it is going to cause depolarization, that is generation of late EPSP, that is excitatory postsynaptic potential. And on gastric gland, it is going to cause the release of histamine and as well as acid secretion. And on CNS, it is involved in the learning, memory and motor function. M2, it is also called as a heart one because M2 receptor are basically located on the heart. So on SA node, it is going to cause us hyperpolarization due to which there will be a decrease in the rate of impulse generation. On AV node, it is going to decrease the velocity of conduction. On atrium, it is going to cause the shortening of APD and as well as decreases the contractility. Ventricle, it is going to decrease the contractility. So in simple words, on heart, the effect of acetylcholine is decreased. It is going to decrease the heart rate. It is going to decrease the contractility. It is going to decrease the impulse generation also. Whereas on cholinergic nerve ending, there will be a decrease in the acetylcholine release. On CNS, this empty receptor is going to cause streaming and analgesia and on visually smooth muscle contraction. So let's see M3. Location is a uh, visceral smooth muscle. Here it is going to cause us contraction. On iris, it is going to cause us constriction of pupil. That means the size of the pupil is going to get reduced. Ciliary muscle, contraction, exocrine gland, secretion. And on vesicular endothelium, it is going to cause us the release of nitric oxide that will lead to vasodilation. Next, we will see the nature and transducer mechanism. Nature, as you know that it belongs to the G protein coupled receptor. All M1, M2, M3 is going to belongs to G protein coupled receptor. This transducer mechanism is little different. As you know that G protein coupled receptor is going to function through three pathways. So M1 and M3 is similar. So in M1 and M3, you can see that they are activating the IP3 DAG pathway, thereby increasing the cytosolic calcium level. And also it is going to activate the phospholipase A2 and increases the prostaglandin synthesis. Whereas on M2, it is going to cause the opening of calcium channel. Sorry, potassium channel. It is going to cause the opening of potassium channel and thereby it is going to decrease the cyclic AMP level. So next we will see agonies and antagonists. What is agonist? These are the agents which bind to the receptor and activate the receptor to generate a response. Whereas antagonist is, these are the agents which bind to the receptor, but it is going to block its action. It is going to inhibit the action. So remember in this way, agonist stimulation, antagonist blockage or inhibition. 
So agonist for M1 is MCN three four three A and oxytimorin, whereas antagonist is parenzepine, telenzepine. Whereas agonist for M2 is methacholine and antagonist is methoxtramine and tripetramine. Agonist for M3 is bethanicol and antagonist is solifenacin and darifenacin. So this complete regarding the muscarinic receptor. Next, nicotinic receptor, which belongs to ligand-gated cation channel. That means a ligand is going to come and bind to the cation channel. It can be a sodium channel, potassium channel, or calcium channel. Depending on, it is going to open the channel and it is going to generate depolarization or it is going to close the channel and result in hyperpolarization. So this nicotinic receptor is going to get activated by nicotine and they are going to get blocked by tubocorarin or hexamethonium. And the structure of nicotinic receptor is closely like pentameric structure. Subtypes of nicotinic receptor. There are two types of nicotinic receptor that is NM and NN. So let's see the location and function. NM is located at neuromuscular junction. That is the junction between a neuron and muscle. Where it is going to cause the depolarization of muscle and plate, and that will lead to contraction of skeletal muscle. Whereas NN is located at three regions. First is autonomic ganglia, where it is going to cause depolarization and result in the generation of postganglionic impulse. And second one is adrenal medulla, where it is going to cause the catecholamine release, that is a release of adrenaline, noradrenaline, and dopamine. And on CNS, site-specific excitation or inhibition. Nature-wise, you know that it's the ligand-gated ion channel, which is also known as intrinsic ion channel. And the structure is pentamer. That means it is going to consist of, and M is going to consist of alpha 2, beta, epsilon, or gamma and delta subunit. E subunit has four transmembrane segments. Whereas NN is going to consist of only alpha or alpha beta subunit and E subunit has four transmembrane segments. Transducer mechanism uh, in NM, it is the opening of cation that is sodium and potassium channel, whereas in NN, it is the opening of cation, basically sodium, potassium, and calcium channel. Agonist is PTMA, that is phenyl trimethyl ammonium or nicotine. Antagonist is tubicorarin or alpha. Bengarotoxin, whereas agonist for NN is DMPP, that is dimethyl phenyl peperazinium and nicotine. And antagonist is hexamethonium and trimethophan. So this complete regarding the nicotinic receptors. Thank you.